My name is Amina Ghostin. I lost my sight when I was six years old. The reason why I lost my sight was because I was a premature child. The blessing is, you know, even though I was born at 23 weeks, um, the only side effect for me was blindness, uh, when there's so many things that could have gone wrong. When I lost my sight when I was six years old, I kind of knew it was happening because the world just started looking different for me. Buildings would kind of go in and out. And when I did lose my sight, I, I woke up, I had to walk in from a fever, if you will, and I think the fever, fever kind of did the whole process in because I had high, a high fever. And in a way, I was kind of relieved that I had lost my sight because now I was, I wasn't either or, I wasn't half sighted or half blind. I was just totally blind now. And I could now really start doing my life as a totally blind person. My mother put me in a school that was specifically geared towards blind students. I learned Braille, I learned how to read Braille um, along with the standard curriculum for elementary kids and, and what have you. Um, and I had awesome teachers that didn't treat any of the students like they were uh, dumb or anything. I mean, they, they really instilled in us a sense of achieve, achievement and accomplishment. Um, and that, that significantly helped. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. So I am the oldest of, well, the second oldest of six kids. Um, my mother remarried, and so I'm 10 to 15 years older than my youngest siblings. So once a lot of the fondest memories I have is babysitting my siblings and re and teaching them how to walk and how to say their ABCs and just fun child stuff. So I, I got to be part of that process four times over. Up until in my late 20s, I struggled with belief in God. For me, I would argue that my God was science and education and achievement. Early on in my life, I had, I had a set plan for what I was going to do. I was going to go to college and I was determined to excel, especially with someone having a disability. I was determined to prove myself to my family and to society at large that having a disability doesn't stop you from leading a productive life. And I did those things. I graduated from the University of Illinois. I would end up moving to Washington, D.C. Um, I did get married, but it was at the University of Illinois that I met a number of fellow Christian students. And it was interesting because, you know how when you go to college and they make you fill out a questionnaire of things you do and don't do? And my questionnaire lined up very well with a clean cut, straight, narrow kind of person. I, I wasn't into drinking and wild living. And so, that landed me on the dormitory floor with all Christian females. And I thought that was ironic. And then my roommate, she decided to join a Bible study, but then at the last minute, she decided to bail out. And she didn't want to let down the Bible study leader who was coming to our dorm to uh, introduce herself. So she was like, can you stand in for me and just tell her I'll catch up with her later. And so that started a seven-year discipleship with Amanda. Um, she and I became really good friends. And what I loved about our relationship is that she was a scientist herself, and yet she was a believer. Um, she loved education and learning, and yet she was a believer. Um, and she was non-judgmental in the things I said or the questions I had or what I did and she just walked alongside me for seven years and even though I struggled for seven years I just felt like she just went along with it and let God do his work in me and 
It wasn't until I came to Washington, D.C. that I just felt this profound sense of loneliness. There's something about being separated from family and friends and being in a city by yourself, more or less, in some in unfamiliar territory. Even though I had achieved all the things I had said I was going to do, I just felt like I there was something more to life than achieving, than um, a job, than education. That's more or less how I came to Christ. I, I kind of remember the day because I had just gotten off the phone with my mother and she had just found out that she was diagnosed with cancer. And I wholly admit that um, I came to God with selfish motives. <laughs> you know, I had heard about these assertions that God could heal and work miracles. And I said, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to um, embrace God and Christ into my life and I started going to church but then interestingly enough all these co-workers just started coming into my life mentors who were also fellow believers and it just became a wonderful journey over over the next four years as I was going through my mother's uh, battle with cancer and then um, as I was going through my divorce that's when I realized I needed a savior because in that process, I recognized that I had done and said some terrible things. And um, even though I didn't mean to, I was a sinner um, and, and, and I needed a savior. I remember when I was standing at my mother's gravesite. It was in February, it was raining. My cousins and I were luring down the the coffin into the grave. And in that, like that, that truly was the darkest day of my life because I could not imagine life without my mother. The more I think about her, the more I realize just how an awesome person she she was and how blessed I was to, to have her as a mother for the for the um, insight that she had <laughs> I gotta tell this story because I can't tell this story though whenever I talk talk about my mom she I remember when I was about 11 years old and she said to me one of these days I'm going to die first of all who tells her child that you're going to die it's a true statement but uh, she says, one of these days I'm going to die and I'm not going to be around to do everything for you. So I need for you to learn how to be more independent and um, self-sufficient. And in that discussion with her, I've just felt like it was like her, it was her way of preparing me for the day when she did die. As I was standing at her grave, I, I remember those words. Even though I was grief stricken by her, her death, I also knew that God was going to, to take care of me, that he, if he had provided me the kind of mother that I had, I had to trust and believe that he would continue providing um, the love and support and guidance that I would need to get through her her loss. And he did. I mean, the, the church that I attended at that time truly stepped up and has the church in general continues to step up. Like people of God just come into my life just when I need them to let me know that, hey, you're not alone, even though you might feel alone. Something I've always struggled with is depression. Even before I accepted Christ into my life, um, depression is still a struggle for me. And I know I'm not the only one. I know, not, I know that I'm not the only believer who wrestles with that. But the difference between, say, being depressed apart from Christ versus with Christ is with Christ you know that this is only temporary um, and not to allow the depression to overwhelm you or get the better of you 
and it, it's okay if you have bad days um, because Christ is going to get you through that and you have the word that word that I used to doubt now is 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 a source of comfort for me because in scripture there are so many people who I see wrestle with depression and affliction and all kinds of challenges in life. He's teaching me to have joy. I want people to know that just because you pick up scripture and you do not understand a single thing what it says, don't be discouraged. Um, it takes time and patience with yourself God is patient with you, and if you ask him, he will open up your mind to understand his word. And secondly, just know that in scripture, God is telling a story, and who doesn't like a good story? But this is like the best story of the ages. And you have the chance to participate in that story by accepting Jesus Christ into your life and don't worry about what people may say or think if they say you're foolish or it's foolish to believe in something that they may think is outdated or irrelevant because it's it's so relevant in the 21st century in spite of all the technological advancements that we have made in society um, Technology and science cannot, cannot heal our hearts, cannot heal the wounds that we have um, experienced in our lives, cannot fix the brokenness that's in our lives. Only God through Christ can do that. But he can only do that if you're willing to take that leap of faith and say, God, allow me to participate in your story.